Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part three of my House in Fata Morgana Let's Play. Last episode was crazy. Uh, after a little bit of a slow start, the introduction of this world, uh, we got into some real interesting drama, learning the truth about the white-haired girl, her lineage, and uh, her relationship to the Rhodes family, and uh, the confirmation of Nellie's true feelings for Mel in a, a way I couldn't have expected it to happen. So with that story seemingly done, we have now moved on to the second door taking place during uh, a not-so-golden age with a uh, beast-like creature who the maid is now serving as the master. And uh, it had a bloody start, uh, so I'm interested to see more about this story of this beast trying to keep some humanity, but Obviously, you know, uh, has some, well, beastly attributes that come out in unexpected ways. So we're going to get back into that story and see where it takes us next. So let's go. All right, so we have a new character here, Aline. All right, that does it for today's shopping. It's now the moment we've all been waiting for, snack time. There's nothing better than having a ham, ham sandwich in the park. Oh dear, maybe I should lower my voice when I'm talking to myself. But it's so nice out, I just can't help myself. Does the weather have anything to do with talking to oneself? Not important. Food, food. If he were here, it would taste even better. I wonder when I'll get to see him next. Pauline, Pauline, there you are. Oh dear, what's got you so frazzled, Mom? Oh, Pauline. What is it? Did something happen? What's the matter, Mom? I don't know why this feels like this is taking place in more modern times. I don't know why it's the thing of like a ham sandwich and the picnic saying Mom instead of like Mother. Yeah, Mom? Pauline. This isn't like you, Mom. It's not like you at all. Tell me, what happened? I told you to stay away from men who trade. Oh, this is the, uh, this must be that woman, the trader said he has a sweetheart at home that he has to get back to. So, okay. Huh? Pauline, my dear daughter, why must God be so cruel to such a sweet girl? You're hurting me, mom. Don't squeeze so tight. What's gotten into you? Listen carefully, Pauline. You must be calm and hear me out. Understood? Your lover, the beloved man you wait for, is dead. The beast's humanity began slipping away from him after that encounter. He had returned to the thing I'd found in the cellar. Actually, he prowled the mansion's halls looking more barbaric than ever. All the maid's hard work, all gone. Despite all the effort he'd put into learning to act like a human, he now ripped the velvet curtains off the wall, howling shrilly, stomping back and forth through the hallways and ravaging the garden. I watched him intently, though from a distance. Bestia was not merely a beast, but an out-of-control, bloodthirsty beast. Just a few days ago, we'd been tending the garden together, but that was no longer possible. I was quite disappointed. Not scared. Not nervous for her well-being. Just disappointed. Eventually, Bestia discovered my hiding place. I had not felt regret in a very long time, but I felt deep regret in that moment. More. Don't have enough. Not enough. I need more. I need more. I must satisfy these urges. Are you saying peace was not enough to sate you? Did I mishear you when you asked for peace? I was mistaken. Asking for peace won't solve anything. Blood, despair, eyes filled with terror. These are the things I need. And I've always known it. You said this mansion fulfills people's desires. Then, then... Give me prey. No more hares. Live animals. Why did I ever teach him to speak human language? Before long, the mansion granted his wish. Once a week, a villager or a traveling merchant from somewhere would wander into the forest, 
ending up at the mansion on the cliff. Ah, so that's the one. The merchant just happened across this place. Was that the mansion granting deep down his true desire was he wanted human flesh? And that's how he ended up there. Because it seemed weird that this merchant traveling from overseas would just happen upon, like, in a forest, just end up at this mansion, right? Though something felt suspicious about the man who greeted them at the door. On the surface, he looked like a proper nobleman. So they all eventually chose to trust Bestia. The mansion had an air of loneliness about it, but it was adequate to provide rest for their weary feet. There was food in a bed, and most comforting of all, there were other people. The lord of the house treated the lost souls like esteemed guests. He poured them fine wine and had me cook for them. No one suspected in the slightest that he was a beast. He put on a reasonably convincing act. Because, yes, I had taught him how to behave like a master. The visitors all went to bed contented. But, as I am sure you can imagine, master, they would never see the light of day again. The penetratingly bright sunlight particular to this area. A beast! It's a beast! You disgusting creature! You hideous monster! Kill him! If that's how you humans want to do things, then I'll play your little game. I'll play it even better than you. I'll kill you. I'll slaughter you. No, please don't. Oh, that's, that's creepy. That's it. Cry for me. Beg for your life. Pray for my mercy. Weep and struggle and suffer and die. No one understands. No one can possibly understand my despair. What did I ever do? Was, I, was it just because I'm a beast? When did I become a beast? Why do beasts have to die? Beasts are savage, and so they must die. I'm a beast, therefore I'm savage. In which case, I'll kill them. I'll show them what makes a beast so terrifying. Ha 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 ha. Oh, there's the laughing again. <laughs> Moonlight crept through the torn velvet curtains, shining down upon the blood-soaked beast. It was a sight that would incite terror in anyone. Or indifference in the maid. Look at this. No one can stand up to me. Humans have no chance against beasts. So I wonder why Bestia, maybe it's just because he has, like, some uh, affection for the maid, because I would assume she's a human, or maybe she's not a human. There is something odd about her. Like I said last episode, the fact that it, all these years have passed and she looks exactly the same, and there's just something off about her. And he's, he doesn't go after her. More. I need more. Give me more. Pray. The mansion continued to sate the beast's demented craving, sending not one, but multiple uh, villagers into his claws, into these blood-stained walls off which echoed his monstrous howls. Stop, please, I'm begging you, spare me. Oh god. Sorry, I'm not familiar with your god. Beasts have no need of gods. I have a wife and son back at the village. Please let me return to them. Why don't you bring them back to me? I'll send them to the same place you're going. I- I- I am with child. Please let me go. Are you now? In case- in that case, I'll kill the baby first. You damned monster. He 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 he. That's right, I'm a monster. And by killing, no one can defy me. I have to show the world that I- that beasts are the most frightening things on this earth. The beast began to change his style, making sick banquets out of his kills. Some days he would tie his guests up in the cellar, playing with them for hours until they finally died. Some days he would drain them of their blood and bathe in it. Some days he would spread them out on the table and feast upon them. Every week, another atrocious party. He did everything imaginable. As a faithful servant of this house, I am confident I can do most anything I'm asked. Though you can surely imagine my surprise at having to use the cooking skills I learned while serving the flaxen-haired family to do that. I can only wonder if it actually tasted any good. Bestia's peculiar sword was always with him for his twisted banquets of self-gratification. However much blood stained it, it never lost its sheen. It was as though the sword drank of the flesh of humans. Master, can you imagine just how wretched I felt? The mansion, once a beautiful sight to behold, reeked of death and acrimony. 
A stench of rotting flesh seeped up from the cellar. Even the years it spent forsaken and in ruins were preferable to that. Or perhaps I only had myself to blame. It was I who had invited the beast into the mansion. More. More. Not enough. This isn't enough to satisfy me. Well, it's nice to see that at least she has, like, she's not completely emotionless during all this. But I guess if she, like, whoever she is the master of, she has to serve them without complaint. But Bestia still sought out to hold more of his perverse parties. Lost villagers were no longer enough to quell his urges. He was indeed a genuine beast. And in time, this is what he began to wish for. Can't you get me any better prey? Oh gosh, is he gonna go for like, I want children, I want babies, I want young flesh. Something truly exquisite. The perfect prey to quench this maddening thirst of mine. I'm guessing that's what he wants. He wants babies, or at least younger prey. Do you know what he meant when he asked for the perfect prey, master? Perhaps, perhaps a hero, someone courageous enough to stand up to him, with whom he could enjoy a battle to the death. Okay, that's good. That's preferable to what I'm thinking. Perhaps a dazzling young nymph to satisfy his other primal urges. Oh no, we're going to what I'm thinking. Or perhaps what he wanted was not human at all, but a demon or phantom. I would soon find out as the mansion attempted to grant his wish, bringing yet another guest to the house on the cliff. I bet it's a kid and maybe this is the moment where the maid is going to be like, this is where I draw the line. I, I can't, I can't abide by this. If the devil guides us, if God guides us, then perhaps I could accept that this was fate. Then it makes sense that I am here. Alright, who's who's knocking? Is it a kid? Is anyone is anyone there? I've lost my way. Would you please be so kind as to spare me a little food? Ah, there. There it is. There comes the poor little offering. Yep. Yep. I'm right. They never learn. They just keep coming again and again. The mansion keeps granting my wish. I would be glad to provide you some food. And you are welcome to stay the night and get some rest. I will have a room prepared. Uh, oh! White hair girl! Uh, okay, was not expecting that. I thought it was gonna be like a little child. Okay. So she shows up in this story. To, I bet she's gonna show up in all the stories. I was saying like... White hair girl's literally on the front title screen. That can't be the end of her story. So she's connected somehow to all this. And her hair is slowly growing back. I mean, it has been some years, so she's got a little bit of her hair back. Then I suppose I shall take you up on your generosity. Like, the, the maid's gotta recognize this girl. Like, is it the same girl, or is she just, like, maybe a, a different white hair girl? I have been wandering for a very, very long time. The fact that she would come back, like, she'd come back to this mansion after what happened here? Maybe she was drawn back to it? Or like I said, maybe it's another white-haired girl. What was that, Master? You recognize her. I imagine you would. That white hair, those red eyes, skin the color of freshly fallen snow, and that flawlessly beautiful visage. You could not possibly mistake her for anyone else. And no, it is not someone who happens to resemble her, okay? The game's telling me straight up it's the same girl. I can understand why you would be surprised, Master. At first, I could hardly believe my own eyes. The wanderer knocking on the door that day was the very same fair-skinned young woman who visited the mansion so many years earlier. The white-haired girl must have spent many, many a night in the forest. Her crystalline skin was covered in red scratches from where she had brushed against stray branches and tree bark. She had even lost her shoes and was standing there barefoot, looking quite disheartened. But that did not make her any less beautiful. In fact, you could just imagine the dense forest canopy parting to allow the sun to shine down upon her. Maybe the maid will protect her. The beast appeared surprised by her angelic beauty as well. It seemed as though all the madness drained from him in that moment. He said nothing, but his eyes told all. He was entranced by the sight of her ruby red irises and her pure white hair. Pardon? I am a beast. This is what I asked for. Something to quench my thirst. You're allowed to be happy. But as I said, it was only for a moment. So rejoice. Imagine just how gratifying it will be 
I see such a beautiful woman writhing in the throes of death. Follow me. I will have a bath drawn as well. And once the moment had passed, the beast was barely able to contain the wellspring of madness within himself. He wanted nothing more than to run his sword through the white-haired girl that very instant, to torture her, to defile her. He tended to her wounds, served her supper, and drew a bath for her. And afterwards, the beast even made to provide her with a dress to wear. Even the outfit she had only worn for one night so many years before was there, waiting for someone to put it on again. For her to put it on again. This, yeah, this is not a coincidence, come on now. He said she could choose anything she liked. She, being such a modest young woman, said she needed not of such fine attire. And what a shame that was. I too wished to see her in a dress once more. I need not such fine clothing. You needn't be modest. No, no, that's not why. Are they not to your liking, then? No, I just... My apologies, she's like, there's some bad memories associated with that dress. You are very generous. Foolish girl, smiling and calling me generous. I was simply imagining what a pretty sight it would be. The sight of her fresh blood splattered on it. The sight of her life slipping away in it. I am glad that after wandering for so long, I ended up here in this mansion. And in a few hours, you'll be feeling the exact opposite. Get all the rest you need. I shall see you again in the morning. I thank you. Is the maid gonna, like, say anything? Be like, yo, you gotta get out of here. Bestia then made his way out of the girl's bedchamber. His mask came crumbling off after only taking a few steps. Ha 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 ha. He he he. There, that's precisely what I wanted. Just imagining how such a beautiful woman will scream. How she'll beg for her life. Hey, hey, are you there? The mansion has given me the perfect offering. Hey, hey, is she not here? Is someone there? Yes, I came by to ask if there was anything you needed. I cannot offer you anything extravagant, not like before, but I am here to provide you with anything in my capacity. I appreciate the offer, but I need nothing. Being allowed to stay the night is more than enough. Do you work here in the mansion? Yes, indeed I do. I have been here for a very, very long time. A very long time? Um... You might think this is an odd question, but... Have we met before? Something about you seems familiar. And I get the feeling I've been in this mansion before. Okay, so she doesn't remember. Yes, we have met. It was quite some time ago, though. They, didn't it say at the very beginning of this game that there's like a mansion in the forest that draws people in? I guess it is cursed in that way. When was it? I, um... It was an unimaginably long time ago. Do you remember a boy and girl with flaxen hair? Flaxen hair? I apologize. My memory fails me. Do you not remember me either? I see. You should probably not push yourself to remember then. There were joyous times, and there were less than joyous times. But would you be so kind as to answer one question? What might your name be? My name... My name is... We probably won't find out this girl's name until the very end. Maybe it's Morgana. <laughs> Maybe that's the whole thing of, like, Fata Morgana. I see, so you are blank again. Again? You should get some rest. I will make tea for you in the morning. Also, go on, close your eyes. Okay, she's not gonna say anything, but best you never waited for morning to come. With his sword that smelled of blood hanging from his hip, the beast slowly, ever so slowly, crept toward the room where the white-haired girl slept. The time was soon approaching for the bloodthirsty beast to paint the walls with the young woman's blood, to turn her bedchamber into a gore-splattered altar upon which he would offer her to the devil. However, when he opened the door, the beast could hardly believe his eyes. She was not asleep, but sitting there as if expecting Bestia's arrival. Why are you awake? Did you not go to sleep? I heard footsteps, so I... And what were you planning to do when I got here? Surely you didn't think we'd simply have a nice midnight chat. 
I was hoping to ask you what it was you wanted. To ask what it was I wanted? Do you even realize what you're saying? Can you not see what's in my hand? You know exactly what I came here to do. Aren't you going to beg? Aren't you going to plead for your life? Aren't you going to ask me not to kill you? If it's necessary. <laughs> but is that what you want? What I want is something much, much more gratifying than your pleas. I want to hold a banquet. It's not enough. No matter what I do, it's not enough. But you, you will be enough to satisfy me. To quench this unholy thirst. To completely, wholly fill me to the bursting point. You want to know what I desire? I desire to devour you. Oh, okay. Bestia shoved the girl back, slamming her into the mattress. He then stabbed his sword through the sheets beside her, looking down upon the girl, the moonlight at its back. Clenching her, her slender throat with one hand, he drew his sword once more, holding the tip but inches from her nose. No matter how much blood it drank, the sword continued to shine gloriously, as though it had just come from the forge. It was an awe-inspiring, tear-shedding or tear-shedding blade, the sight of which would cause anyone to imagine the misfortune about to befall them. Go on, mock me, ridicule this hideous, barbaric beast standing before you. From the moment you saw me, you thought me unsettling, no? But you averted your eyes, because I had food for you, because I gave you a place to rest. You pretended not to notice the beast. This is retribution. Retribution for you damned humans. So beg for your life like they all do. Cry. Plead for mercy. If you say... If you say you're ugly, then I must be equally ugly. What? What came from this girl's mouth was neither a plea, nor an insult, nor a scream. Full-grown men had wept before him, and yet the slight young woman did not. Despite this terrifying beast being upon her, moments away from extinguishing her life, even I almost shrieked in fright. Bestia could, be, uh, could believe neither his eyes nor his ears. Do you not fear me? Can you not see what I am about to do to you? What am I to be afraid of? I am threatening to murder you, to rip your intestines out with these claws and watch you die in agony. I enjoy it more than anything in the world, filling other people's hearts with fear. The more lives I take, the more I enjoy it. I am a beast driven by madness. What he expected was for the beautiful girl before him to desperately implore him for mercy. He wanted nothing more than to see despair seep into every corner of her red eyes, for he believed it would truly be a sublime moment, euphoria unlike anything he experienced before. Bestia prodded her with his singular sword, poking a slit and skin smoother than silk. You mean to take mercy on me, because you see me as pitiful. But she did not do as the beast wished. She looked upon him with sympathy rather than fear. This rattled the beast. He had never once seen anyone respond to him that way. W what possessed you to say that? What on earth is going through your head? Mercy? Mercy? Do you not comprehend the situation? How can you be so calm? Reverse psychology! Scream, cry and shout, beg for me to spare you. Throw yourself at my feet. She's like, I'm not going to give you what you want. Throw yourself at my feet. Otherwise, I'll... I... I am a beast. A beast that never tires of killing. To me, you appear to be a person. You... You're lying. You listen to the things I say, and you respond with your own words. I, I was taught how to speak. I... I... I'm a beast who speaks human language. But you think. You use your mind to come up with responses. And you hesitate. If I... If I, if I, if I, if I'm human, then why do they disparage me so? What, why do they reject me and try? She must at some level. She's like, people say the same thing about me because of my appearance, so maybe we get each other. To kill me. Because I'm a beast. A repulsive beast. That's why, isn't it? I, I will do nothing to hurt you. We are alike. Exactly. Alike. Don't be ridiculous. How can you say we're alike when you're as beautiful as you are? There's nothing beautiful about me. What value does outward appearance have? You... You've suffered much persecution. 
which is why you tremble in fear. I am not trembling. I am not afraid. I can hear the cries of your heart. What, what on earth is wrong with you? Why are you not afraid? Why do you not scream in terror? I am afraid, but more than fear, I feel like I know now what my role is. Your role? You'll have me, then I... I would like to remain here in the mansion. Because that worked out for you well last time, didn't it? Are you mad? I will eventually kill you. Torture you. Put you through hell. Make you wish you were never born. That does not change my mind. Please, allow me to stay. I find it very hard to believe that what you want deep down is to hurt people. And I get the feeling that I am meant to be here. That it is my role. Bestia was at a loss. He was perhaps afraid of this girl who did not fear him, and even attempted to embrace him. She behaved too differently from all the other humans he knew of, who only ever harassed and pushed him away. Why are you so kind to me? To this beast, this murderer? Bestia's sword slipped from his hand, hitting the hard, wo uh, hard floor with a metallic whine. When the sound died down, the white-haired girl extended her hands for the beast with the utmost of affability. Her fingers were white as freshly fallen snow, something this area never saw. They traced his distinctive frame. They ran along his unusually shaped nose. They slid across his rough, yellowed skin. They drifted around his rather small eyes. The beast trembled once more, this time not out of twisted desire from deep within, but from the unimaginable comfort of physical contact. Her fingers moved so gently, so pleasantly, wrapping him in their warmth. Are you crying? A single teardrop slid down the arc of his finger. Looking into her clear eyes, Bestia came to a realization. And at the same time, he felt somewhat dismayed. You are without sight. Oh, shit. Taken in the throes of his primal urges, the beast had not noticed, but there was an emptiness in the girl's eyes. Interesting. So, like... I imagine the first time she had sight because she commented on people's appearances, on their hair. Maybe she just took it from, like, she heard other people talking about uh, the roads and their hair, so she said the same thing. But then she also spoke of her own appearance. So at some time, she was blinded. She appeared to be gazing far into the distance, not focused on the man, despite being close enough to touch him. What if she's like, you know what, now that I felt your face, yeah, you are a beast, actually. You're quite ugly. Tears had begun running down Bestia's cheeks earlier, when she had called him a person. But it was not until one of those droplets had slid across the back of her finger that she had realized. She would indeed have no need of extravagant dresses. After all, she could not see what she was wearing. That is correct. I am blind. But whoever decided that reality is only that which can be seen? I know not what appearance I have. In the darkness, everything is as one. There is no difference between beast and man. If you are a beast, then I too must be a beast. To call the girl a beast would be paramount to eating sugar and insisting it was salt. Do pardon the trite analogy, please. But you know rather well, Master, that the white-haired girl was not at all what you would call a beast. Not simply in appearance, but all the way down to her core. There was nothing beastly about her. Her words brought him faint pain, but the beast still felt on some level that he wanted to keep her at his side, to see what would happen. His next words were in large part impulsive. I am grateful that you cannot see. Without exception, everyone who had wandered into the mansion had lost their lives before the sun rose the next morning. She was the first visitor who had not met this fate. Over time, Bestia's madness gradually subsided. He even began to seem rather tame. He would hardly believe it was the same beast who had once reveled in those perverse festivities. He was, I imagine, at a loss for how to behave. I too would be flustered in the constant presence of such beauty. But it was not just her appearance. She had said she wished to live with him, a beast who had committed countless atrocities. This is really feeling like Beauty and the Beast right now. Just like... A beautiful woman living with a beast in a mansion and teaching him to love and to have humanity. Perplexing, indeed. What is the matter? Do you honestly not fear me? Do I appear to be afraid of you? No, you do not. 
But you would. If you could see me, you'd react the same as everyone else. You would mock me. You would despise me. You'd want to kill me. You don't know what I've done because you can't see. I enjoyed it. I basked in their terror. So why? Why do I not want you to find out? I don't want you to know how many people I've tortured, how many I've slaughtered, how much blood I've imbi uh, imbibed, all the horrible things I've done. Horrible. I'm aware that what I've done is wrong, but I relished in it. I wanted for so long to slaughter them. I desperately desired to see blood, human blood. What is it I crave? Murder or laughter? So even though he says like he wants his his big wish was to have like a beautiful woman to slaughter what he really wanted was someone who could love him or at least treat him uh you know as a human or with respect i said that i had no need for peace and yet here i am is something the matter no some tea oh shall i make some are you thirsty no I made some tea. It's probably cold by now. I thought you might want some. You... you don't... No, no, I'll take it. What are you laughing for? Because I'm happy. Is it to your liking? It's bitter. Their life together began quietly, their days without event. They had no extravagant meals, there were no swaths of guests lending life to the mansion's halls, but there was also no one screaming in fear for their life. It was the peaceful life Bestia had lost, and he had returned once more to that quiet realm. What's the matter? You're always so quick to notice my presence. My world is one of darkness, so I do have a heightened sense of hearing. What is it like? How do you perceive the world? I cannot imagine living in complete darkness. Occasionally, I can see light. Light? Yes, not a radiant light like the sun, but a soft light floating in darkness. Like a candlelight, I suppose. That only perplexes me all the more. I find it difficult to understand what you are describing. That's so. It's difficult for me as well. I am not sure how to explain it. But it's not complete darkness. I can sense your presence, for instance, and I can tell how windy it is from the way the windows vibrate. And also... Also? I also feel as though I can sense the wavering of emotions. The candlelight begins to flicker erratically, from fear, intense sorrow, or other similar emotions. My emotions? She's like an empath. I do not know. It could be yours, and it could be mine. This mansion is a very peculiar place. The candlelight is always wavering, and yet it somehow seems stable. It makes me feel as though this is where I belong. I don't think I understand. I am a beast, and so I lack the intelligence. But you... I'm going to go hunting. Is there anything you would like? Whatever you like. You know, it's like, I'm gonna go get- I'm gonna go out, do you want like- do you want some fast food or something? It's just like, what kind of meat do you want? All right, then. Um, if you find fruit, that would be nice. Fruit. We're gonna make him vegetarian. There we go. That's how we remove the beast. <laughs> it's sour. You picked it before it was ripe. I, I didn't know. Is that a bad thing? I don't know anything. I cannot see, but if fruit is still green, you are not supposed to eat it yet. What color are these? Green. No. <laughs> Blue. Hee <laughs> hee. Shall I give you a hand preparing supper? I cannot ask for help of someone who can't see. You'll hurt yourself. Don't worry, I can tell for the most part where things are by touch and sound. Are you worried? Worried? Worried. Worried. The thought of blood dripping down her finger doesn't excite me. What's going on? What on earth has happened to me? If I appear to be in any danger of harming myself, please let me know. Then you have nothing to worry about. You do not seem any more comfortable in a kitchen than me. She always cooks the... Where did she go? Yeah, we haven't seen the maid in a while, have we? Huh? She always comes when I call. I had hidden myself away, 
Bastia had learned how to go about his daily life without my assistance, and the two of them had had no need of others in their peaceful world. Oh my, what is the matter, master? I was not lonely at all, no. It was an absolute pleasure simply watching them. I mean that. It was not my role to be at his side, nor was I the one to be at hers. If she could make Bestia into the master of the house, then my presence was unnecessary. I appear where I'm needed, as I appeared to serve the flaxen-haired family, nothing more. If they sought a servant, then I would show myself. Yes, certainly. After some time, they began to sleep in the same bed. Oh dear, no, not for the reason you're imagining, master. You thought no such thing? Hee <laughs> hee. Though they slept in the same bed, they did not lay together. They did so, it seemed, because they were more comfortable in the same place. The two acted more like family than lovers. Hey, hello? Are you asleep? No, I am awake. Is the candlelight wavering? Right now, it is very calm. I see. Say, tell me about your childhood. What? Me? Won't you? My childhood? Yes. I have no such stories to tell. When I was a child, I lost everything. My mother, father, brothers, everyone. So I... For as long as I can remember, I did not have a father. I lived alone with my mother, but I know... Okay, so now her story is changing. Before she was with her father, there was no talk of her... Well, her mother was... That's right. Her mother was uh, Mel and Nell's... Uh, mother. So now her story is changing. Okay, interesting. I lived alone with my mother, but I never felt like that was a bad thing. Was she kind? Yes, very. She was a compassionate woman. But we were poor, and because I cannot see, my mother was the only one who could work, and now apparently she's been blind since childhood. Okay. She would be away for long stretches of time, supposedly because she served at a very respectable house. I do not know whether or not that was true. Perhaps she was doing much more demanding work. I never asked. I believed not asking was best for her. From time to time, I would receive letters from her. Someone who lived nearby read them to me. The letters went something like this. Life in the mansion is difficult, but everyone treats me so well, and they say I do good work. I'll be back with more money soon, so you be a good girl. Other than that, she allegedly expressed concern for my health and safety as well as repeatedly saying how much she loved me. You have a good mother. I did. Nearly everything I remember my mother saying to me was written in her letters. So, so much kindness and warmth. Why do you not live with her now? How did you end up here in the mansion? Before long, she lost her life at her place of employment, and I was sent the money she had earned. It was, I imagine, enough to survive on. When my mother was alive, she often lamented my blindness. If only you could see, she would say, I could show you just how extraordinary this world is. So with the first story, it was her hair. That was like the big issue, and now it's her eyesight. So I decided I would visit a renowned physician in order to fulfill my mother's dream. A physician in this country. However, upon examining me, he said that he could not restore my sight. Dejected, I was on my way back home when bandits attacked. They robbed me of the money I, bought, or I brought to pay for my treatment. I lost everything my mother saved for me, the money she gave her life to earn for me. I failed to repay her for anything she did, which cast a dark cloud over my heart. My world has always been wrapped in darkness, but at that moment, I was in the deepest abyss. There was not even a speck of light. I was at a complete loss. With nowhere to go, I simply wandered, no destination in mind. And that was when I miraculously arrived at this mansion. It was as if I, it had summoned me here. You were being summoned by the mansion to fulfill my craving. But it didn't end up that way. I wonder if the mansion is disappointed. I see. <laughs> She's like, well, I don't. <laughs> Bad joke, sorry. I apologize for not having a brighter tale to tell. I imagine you were hoping to hear joyful childhood memories. No. Did they hurt you? Pardon? Oh, he's like, I'm gonna I'm fuck them up. The bandits. When they attacked, were you hurt? You are so compassionate. I am no such thing. I am not compassionate. 
I was perfectly fine. I took a few scratches, but nothing you need worry about. I see. I believe. That I'm happy now. I was unable to regain my sight, and I haven't the money to return home. But I believe I left in order to come here. Is your life right now happy? I... I'm terrified. I'm volatile. I'm growing accustomed to this woman's comfort. I'm afraid of losing her. A beast should have should not have these feelings. A murderous beast. Take this. What is... It makes a good gift, supposedly. I was planning to throw it out when I learned that. But I couldn't. Is it a rose? I felt like it was meant to give to someone. That's what the... Yeah, that's what the uh, maid said. It's probably that white rose. She got it again! She got it in this life, too. That could only be you. It is a fake white rose. What? Is it gonna turn red again? A white rose accessory. Do you not want it? No. No, I do. I just, for some reason... Never mind. Thank you. I appreciate it. Do you not desire more prey? But you were so hungry for blood before. I've had enough. I don't need any more. Although, she is blind. No, because she cannot see, she does not push me away. She's the only one willing to accept me, to be with me. So hard to please. You obtain peace, cast it aside, and then pick it up once more. But you'll never be able to escape it completely. After all, you are enchanted by the pleasure murder brings. You have been for a very, very long time. This time, this time I'm done. I won't kill anyone anymore. Being with her is far more satisfying than the joy killing brought me. To be with her is what I truly want. So very self-centered. You certainly are. I just, is he speaking to like an invisible entity to himself? Hey. It was as though he was viewing a flashback. The sound of knocking echoed through the mansion, as it had the day the merchant came and brought the beast's short-lived piece crashing down. What did I just tell you? I do not want any more Oh, he's talking to the house. I do not want any more prey. Stop this. Stop it. Don't bring me any more. I thought you were supposed to fulfill my desire. Why did the door open? Sword in hand, Bestia ran through the mansion's halls. He was overcome with fear. He had obtained the peace he, he so dearly wanted, and even found someone who did not fear him. He was terrified the appearance of more prey would cause all this to crumble. If he spotted the prey, murdered them, and conceded to his madness, she might choose to leave him. As much as she claimed he was not hideous, she witnessed him doing that. I'll just chase them out. Why don't you just lock yourself away in a room and, t and then tell the maid or tell the white-haired girl to send them away? I'm done with this. My desire has changed. Plus, if you come running at somebody with a sword, uh, they're probably gonna, like, attack you if they can, and then you're just gonna attack back in self-defense. I feel like this is not the best way to go about it. However... Ah, ah... What, 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 why? Why? Bestia shuddered in terror at the sight. What, what is it? Oh, shit. Okay. Stay back. Stay away from me. He broke into a run. Ah, ah, ah. It was not, after all, a helpless prey that entered the mansion. That, that thing is... The monster's voice seemed to slither along the floor behind him. He felt as though if he were to turn around, it would be right there on top of him. Why are you chasing me? Bestia shouted with fear in his voice, uncharacteristic of the beast who had so readily slaughtered his prey. But can you blame him? That's... that's... a Bestia. In that moment, I had an epiphany. Ah, I had assumed he'd called himself Bestia, unaware of what the word meant. A Bestia other than me. 
Bestia is not in fact a name. It is a word that means beast. Indeed, a second beast had come to the mansion. Why are you chasing me? Are you here to kill me? Is it because I settled down? Is it because I wanted to stop being a beast? Ha! Ah. Is something the matter? When the white-haired girl poked her head out of her bedchamber, Bestia was aghast. He frantically attempted to return her to her room. You must leave your room. I just feel like this white-haired girl is, like, no matter which door she's in, she's doomed to have something horrible happen to her. But as he was doing this, the horrifying creature, no, the beast's voice, drew nearer. Um, do not open this door for any reason. I will, I will protect you. That's right. That's right. I don't want this peace destroyed. These tranquil days together with this woman. I will protect them. I will. Trembling in fear, Bestia gathered his resolve. He pointed his sword, which until then had only been used to torment others at the second beast. Now he would wield his blade to protect the person he cared about. This was the same beast who had killed and killed and killed to satisfy his own primal des uh, desires. I will not let you destroy this. I will protect it from you. From a rational point of view, the things he was saying and feeling were rather idealistic, but Bestia was desperate. He did not want to lose this peace. Before long, the beast, the one chasing him, appeared from within the darkness. Yeah. Ah, say, Master, if resolve was the only thing necessary for one to act courageously, would that not mean any, uh, nearly anyone could become a hero? Bestia had viciously slaughtered so many people before. He had gathered the courage to protect the things he cared for, but now he was shaking. He did not gallantly bring his sword down upon the approaching beast. Instead, he trembled visibly from head to toe. He's feeling what all those people felt before he killed them. He must have been quite terrified at the beast's appearance. Stop. No, stay away from me. Don't. Stay back. Seeing Bestia so scared, I imagine the beast thought it as a prime opportunity, for it slowly, ever so slowly, ambled toward him. I wonder why he's hesitating so much. Ah. 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 If I don't kill it, it will kill me. I have to kill it. I have to kill it. He's probably afraid that if he, if he commits violence again that that's going to be the end he won't be able to go back i have to kill it 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 and that was the moment bestia's mind ran off the rails of sanity kill 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 okay i guess he wasn't wrong he lifted his sword above his head facing the approaching beast ah ah and ferociously ah <laughs> swung it down upon his assailant ah Again, and again, and again. Screaming horrifically at the top of his lungs. He continued swing after swing until the other beast had gone completely still. I wonder if he's gonna flash back and it's just gonna be a person. It's not a beast at all. Ah. Ah. Before long, copious volumes of fresh blood stained the corridor. At some point, the other beast had stopped moving and sunken into a pool of his own lifeblood. Ah. <sighs> ah. <sighs> I, I did it. I did it. Killed it. I killed the other bestia. Ha ha ha. Bestia had let his guard down, assuming he had claimed victory over the unmoving beast. I had not imagined either that the beast could still be alive after shedding so much blood. Stay back. The beast reached its hand out towards Bestia. It was determined to drag him down to the underworld, it seemed. Slowly sliding along the slippery floor, it dragged itself toward him. Even on its last breaths, it continued reaching for Bestia, fixated on him. He kicked the beast's hand up into the air, staggering it, and then he, burn in hell, rammed his blade down into it. Bestia's fear-stricken expression was hardly that of a knight who had just saved the maiden. Nevertheless, he had indeed eradicated the other beast. <laughs> I 
All right, so what's the aftermath of this going to be? Is he going to be able to keep his sanity? You come back again, okay? Promise me. I'll be waiting. Waiting. Believing that you'll return. I'll be waiting. Is this that girl who, uh, with the merchant? Because she was just, like, shown for a moment. Uh, I feel like she's got to have more to the story than this, right? Maybe she ends up at the same mansion trying to find where, where her boyfriend ended up. I don't know. There she is. Okay, right? I was like, yes. Like, she's got her own sprite and everything. I was like, she's got to have more to the story than just being told that he was dead. It's about time for you to set off. Indeed. You take care out there. Don't eat anything funny and get yourself sick. Got it? I'll be fine. I'm a tough one. The more overconfident you are, the more you'll push yourself and risk getting hurt. Make sure you drink lots and lots of water, okay? Take care not to get heat stroke or sunstroke, okay? <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> like, basically being the mother, just being like, just don't get yourself hurt. Be safe. You worry too much. Relax. I know how to take care of myself on a ship. I know, but you never know what might happen. I want you to be in good health when I see you again. I will be. Though I'll probably keep you waiting for a long time again. I'll be waiting. Don't worry about me. I'll be waiting, I promise. I managed to wait a year and a half already, so I can handle this. Come back, okay? You have my word. Thanks. Safe travels. I refuse to believe that he could be dead. I have to find proof that somewhere out there, he's still alive and well. She's gonna come across the mansion, isn't she? I have to find him. I have to prove it. We have arrived- oh, we are too! Okay, we have arrived at our destination, madam. Though I dearly wish I could assist you in your search. I have things to attend to during our stay. No, don't worry yourself. I couldn't possibly impose on you any further. Madam, Pauline, you mustn't put yourself in danger. Should anything happen to you, your mother would be devastated. I wonder if Mom's mad. No, she's probably sad. Her sorrow, as expansive as the Albufera wetlands, as deep as the ocean into which the sun sets. And it's all my fault. But don't worry, I'll be fine. As soon as I have certainty of his well-being, I'll go straight home. Me and him, together. Oh, she's in deep denial. Pauline, your lover is... I have faith in him. He would never break a promise to me. He's always come back to me, no matter how long it took. A man like that wouldn't just suddenly disappear on me. There's been a mistake, and I have to prove it. I have to be the one to do it, because he'll remain gone unless I see it with my own eyes. I wonder who you inherited your stubbornness from. What? Nothing. An acquaintance of mine lives in this village. I shall be staying with him. I'll let him know about you. He should gladly welcome you to his home. Thank you, Orlando. You've been such a big help. Pauline. One month. You search for one month, and if you haven't found him, you come home with me. Will you promise me that? You are her only daughter. Okay. Good. To tell you the truth, I regret bringing you with me. What I should have done is dragged you back home. But I couldn't bear to see you like that, Pauline. It was like I was looking at her when she was younger. Orlando. Anyway, one month. Understood? Yes. Don't worry, a month will be plenty. I will find him before the month is up. The sleepy seaside village is on a small side, but from what I've been told, it used to have a flourishing fishing industry. Now, though, it's like there's a fog hanging over everything. That's not too surprising, I suppose. A few months ago, the village was part of a war for control of the country, and they're now under a different rule than before. Stripped of their independence and battered by the raging tempest of war, the people's spirits have been eroded, and spiritual damage is not so easily mended. Even if they were not physically harmed, there are deep wounds in their hearts. It's a lovely village, though. The breeze feels different than it does back home. Beneath it all, I'm sure the people are actually quite friendly and cheerful. A long, long time ago, I went on a trip to a land in the south. This country is quite a bit south of mine, too. People blessed with lots of sunlight are bound to be warm at their core. Say, Orlando, 
Yes? May I take a look around the village? I don't see why not. The sun's still up. I'll need some time to catch up with my acquaintance, so I suppose this is as good an opportunity as any. Do you know where to find me, madam? Yes, you go down that way, turn at the second crossroad, follow it straight for a little, cross over to the other side, and it's right there, right? Are you sure you can find it? Don't worry. It's... <laughs> If she's anything like me with directions, she will get herself horribly lost. All right, then. You're planning to stay within the village today, right? I'll see you in a little bit, then. If you get lost, give me a holler. As much as you may insist otherwise, you really do care, Orlando. I feel bad enough as it is. Please don't take advantage of me. I think I might take full advantage of this. Thanks. See you in a bit. Hmm? What's he doing out here all alone, I wonder? There's no one else around. I wonder if something happened. Would it seem odd if I tried talking to him? I wouldn't want to get labeled as suspicious on my first day here. That's asking for trouble, but... The boy stands all alone on the shore, looking somehow precarious. As though a breeze might whisk him away into a million grains of sand. And if I look away, he won't be there when I turn back. That's how the boy appears to me. Hmm... You never know until you try. Besides, it's important for me to communicate with the natives. I've got to build trust with the people of this village. Let's go. Good afternoon. What are you doing out here all alone, little man? Javi. Ah, by force of habit, I spoke in my native tongue. How dense can you be, Pauline? You may have just been talking to Orlando, but that's no excuse. This isn't your homeland. But everything's all right. I studied the language, so I should be able to hold a simple conversation. Um, you don't need to be afraid of me. My name is Pauline. I'll be staying in your village for a while. Nice to meet you. Um, do you not understand me? Don't trust the creepy, creepy children. <laughs> um, my name is Pauline. What? is your name. At least she's trying to speak their language. It just makes me think of people who like think that if they just speak English loudly and slowly, then the person will understand them if they don't speak English. Little man. Dreadful. <laughs> what? He, he just called me dreadful. That's one hell of an accent you've got. Who are you? A bandit? What are you here for? N no, I'm not a damn bit, I promise. I stammered. Atrocious. There's no need to be so mean. I put in a pretty good effort, I thought. You could at least compliment me instead. God awful, I wasn't expecting humor from this, uh, this visual novel. Th that's not nice. What's a foreigner doing in this remote corner of the world? Sightseeing in our little village? Sure got a lot of time on your hands. So much for the people of the South being warm in their hearts. I do not. I'm very busy. You're a little obnoxious, aren't you? Wow, this escalated. You're supposed to treat your elders with respect, you know? Like I give a damn, lady. You're older, but you're acting way more like a kid than me. My name isn't Lady. It's Pauline. Pauline! And he's like, well, you're calling me Little Man. I know that, like, you don't know my name yet, but still, it's a little bit condescending. And? What are you here for? Completely ignored. Uh, ahem. I am, um, here to look for someone. There are rumors he was last seen around here. Have you by chance seen any other foreigners around? Hell if I know. Ugh, he just won't let me in. I've got to befriend him first. Of course he's going to be guarded if I just start throwing questions at him. Uh, Alright, so you haven't seen him. Then why don't you tell me about yourself? What are you doing out here? Is that any of your business, lady? The boy's out here on the village all alone. Wouldn't that make you curious? Don't you have any friends? Maybe he's one of those kids who doesn't have any? Say, if you don't mind, could we be friends? I'm not really familiar with the area, so it would be nice to have someone with me. What do you say? I don't need any damn friends. And who the hell would be dumb enough to say, sure, I'll be your friend to someone they just met. This kid doesn't really talk like he's from the 1700s. 
How are you so jaded? You need to be more courteous, kinder to others, not so antagonistic. I just thought it would be nice if we could talk a bit. That's all I want, really. How about you quit being so damn noise nosy, lady? It just so happens I like being alone. Ugh, I've got some strange woman ruining my alone time. I'm out of here. Hey, wait a second. Ah, oh, he's gone. This is... This is going to be really, really hard. <laughs> okay, that was, like, completely different from the, uh... Like, how, like, the, uh, the tone of the rest of this so far. But I think we need a little bit of lightness, given all the other stuff that's happened. Master? Master? Ah, you've returned to me. You suddenly started staring off into the distance. I was quite startled. Now, let us continue our tale. The mansion's corridor was a horrifically repulsive mess. Splatters of fresh beast blood covered the walls, and there was a repugnant odor. Anyone would be compelled to avert their eyes at the sight. What happened here? I am grateful that you cannot see, because you would certainly think me a beast if you were able to see this. Because you cannot see, you do not know what I look like, but I know. Another beast like me broke into the mansion. Was it... I protected you, did I not? I protected you. Say that I protected you, that I did this for you. Oh, in his hysteria, beast, uh, Bestia tore down the curtains hanging on the hallway window, bloodstained curtains that reeked of dead beast. I... I... What did he have to be so afraid of, though? He had exterminated the other beast encroaching upon his territory. I would understand if he had puffed his chest in pride, but far from that, his terror merely intensified. It's like he doesn't want to think that he killed for no reason? Calm down. The white-haired girl extended her hand for Bestia, but even her gentle, lovingly outstretched fingers evoked fear in his eyes. Instinctively, he feared anything that entered his territory, and then attempted to remove it. And driven by those instincts, he shoved aside the white-haired girl, the one he said he wanted to protect. Oh. Being without sight, she had no way of reliably catching her balance, and she fell to the floor with a splash, for she had landed in the pool of blood left by the beast. Red seeped into her clothing, slowly spreading through the fabric. At first, it looked like she had fallen into a puddle of fresh, bright dye, but before long, the red darkened into a brownish black. Ah, uh, uh, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't know. I. It's okay. I'm fine. Nah. She embraced the panicking beast, softly whispering, "Shh, shh," as if trying to calm a crying baby. The bestie was taller and physically stronger. The white-haired girl was emotionally more stable than he. What has you so frightened? Please, tell me. I promise I will not look down on you for any reason. Nah. All I want is to free you from the depths of your suffering. Sometimes talking about things can lighten the burden they place on you. We have the ability to use words, both you and me. With language, the gift God bestowed upon man, we can communicate our feelings with one another. It's all right. Don't be afraid. It's like every time this white-haired girl comes back to the mansion, because they say that the mansion grants desires, right? So she, maybe she was like the desire for Mel, like Mel wanted love. And this beast also wants love to some degree, or like peace. And that's what she comes. She comes and she brings that for a little while. And then something horrible goes wrong. So I feel like she's kind of like a blessing and a curse to whoever's in the mansion. Talk to me, please. Am I a man? You act as though I am a man. No, you treat me like one. I cannot see you as anything else, as I have said before. Only because you cannot see me. You are the only one who says I am a man. You, who are without sight. But I was content with that. You treated me like a man, so I felt as though I'd become one. The time I spent with you, I had real peace. I almost... I almost forgot that I was a wretched beast. I no longer sought after prey. Prey. Oh, yes. Before you arrived, I murdered dozens of humans. I didn't want you to know I was such a sinful creature, leaving a long trail of bodies in my wake. But I thought... I thought if I didn't show them my strength, if I didn't force them into submission, 
then I would never find peace. I was drunk with power. I took great pleasure in it, in slaughtering people. The fear was so overwhelming that you turned the act of killing into one of gratification. You did it to protect yourself. She's like the most understanding person ever, forgiving. Are you still not going to condemn me? Taking another's life is wrong. Not only does it rob them of their time on Earth, it inflicts great wounds upon those who care about them, aka Pauline. However, I do not regard you as a mere beast, nor as a mere murderer. Something made you the way you are. I am almost certain of it. Something. Tell me about yourself. In your words, from your mouth, tell me. When I woke up, I was weak, exhausted, emaciated. I couldn't think clearly or even remember much of anything. I was thirsty, hungry, sore from head to toe. A crowd of people surrounded me. You... This was a long time ago. Well, not so long as to be described as long ago, but it is as far back as my past goes. I sought help from the people around me, but my words did not get through to them. The only thing that came from my mouth were feral howls. They scowled at me, and then... Stink and gross. I have no interest in any more trouble. Shall we kill it? Never seen anyone like this before. What is he, anyway? Beats me. A bestia by the look of it. <laughs> bestia. Bestia. And that's why he said that was his name. Bestia. Bestia. I didn't understand what they were saying about me. All I could pick out was the word bestia. The humans brought sticks and fishing poles with which they poked and prodded me. At first, they probably meant only to chase me out. But before long, their actions began to escalate. <laughs> bestia. Bestia. Filthy beast. We ain't got nothing for you. Dirty, nasty thing. Stay back. Hit it. Pound it. Haha, -ha, he's feeling it. Beat it. Beat the thing. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Die. Why? Why should I have to die? I was simply asking for help. If they didn't have food to spare, a glass of water would have been enough. I asked for nothing of them but some relief for my thirst. But the humans would not hear my pleas. My words reached no one's ears. When they brought weapons and started chasing me around, attempting to kill me, all I could do anymore was run. And as I fled, I saw something. A child pointing to a wild dog covered in mud and shouting, Bestia! That was when I finally understood that I was a beast. And that was why the humans wanted to exterminate me. That was too far, man. You killed a dog. She's just like, nah, I can't. <laughs> I'm not down with that. I was neither cattle nor swine nor fowl of the air, but a vicious beast. The kind of creature that ravaged their fields. And so, you sought to prove your superiority to them, so you would never have to be called a beast or chased out of somewhere again. I was so close to forgetting it all. The time I spent with you is truly wonderful. I could forget about people calling me a beast, chasing me around and trying to kill me. I could forget about slaughtering them, painting the walls with their blood. I could forget about everything. It felt like it actually become a man. But you... But then, it showed up. Another beast, like me. It was my kin. A different individual, though, built differently than me. I am taller than it was, but it was a beast. And I, too, must be a beast. Regardless, I will continue to insist that you are not, as many times as I must. Should you be troubled by these painful memories, and attempt to cause someone harm again, I will be there to remind you of your humanity. That which you can see with your eyes, the whole of the world. It's like she came here for the sole purpose of, like, making him feel better about himself. I cannot see you, that is correct. But I can feel you, sense you, hear you, and I can learn what you bear within your heart. You worry, you fear, and you think. And you also show concern for me. These things all prove that you are human. This woman, she really is going to change me. If I remain with her, I can become a man. It might be no more than an illusion, but with her near, it can become my reality. Have you calmed yourself down some? The hall needs to be cleaned. So it does. 
I'll take care of it. You don't need to worry. You should get changed, though. Very well. I believe I care so much for you. Because you resemble me. We are not alike in the slightest. As I've said, you are a beautiful woman. You may compliment my appearance, but no one else ever did. I have been labeled a witch because of the color of my eyes and my hair. My eyes, they're red. A beautiful shade of red, indeed. A magnificent color, like blood. You're the first person to say that about them. Even my mother said my eyes frightened her. Because people called me a witch, I was rarely afforded the opportunity to interact with others. So I grew up mostly alone, as the people outside the mansion called you a beast. So too, the people outside call me a witch. See? We are alike. Do I look like a witch to you? No, you... You are a beautiful, compassionate human woman. And you are a human man, even if you don't believe it yourself. Yet again, Bestia found himself feeling grateful for the white-haired girl's blindness. For while he had just managed to put on a smile, tears were also rolling down his cheeks. Joy, bitterness, sorrow. A maelstrom of emotions flowed unbound from within, but he cried in silence. Bestia shed his tears discreetly, so as not to allow the white-haired girl to notice. He looked down upon the floor. A single corpse lay there. And no matter how hard he tried, he could not see it as anything other than a beast. A beast that looked just like him. He came from a faraway land across many seas. There was never any guarantee that we would see each other again. But I still believed that no matter how great the ocean that divided us, we were bound by our love. The only thing that needed stand be uh, between us was physical distance. I wonder if he's here yet. Um, hello, my little Nietzsche. What has you so out of breath? Eek. Oh, don't scare me like that. And where did you pick up the word like Nietzsche? That I, I definitely can't pronounce that. I never took you for someone so pretentious. Ah, I'm sorry. You just looked so much like a rabbit there, the way you were tossing your head back and forth, looking around for me. Oh, you. Nietzsche is, like so is something that you call a child. I'm not a little girl anymore. I'm sorry, really. Don't be so mad, Pauline. I'm not mad at all. It's It's been a year and a half. We finally get to see each other again. That we do. Did you have any trouble out at sea? Did you fall ill or get caught in a storm? Or run into any kind of danger at all? No, there was no trouble. Everything went fine, without incident. The sea god was watching over us, I suppose. Thank goodness. I was so worried. But you kept your promise. You came back for me. And you kept yours and waited for me. Of course I did. I trust you, and I don't mind waiting. Even so, 18 months must have been a long time for you. It was. It felt long to me as well. Every day I would picture your face, recall the sound of your voice. But over time, I began to lose surety. It absolutely terrified me. Is that what you actually looked like? Is this truly the sound of your voice? You mean you almost forgot? Not at all, Pauline. I was afraid that in my profound love for you, my mind had created its own image. That perhaps my adoration had grown so strong that it turned you into a transcendent beauty like Cleopatra herself. You must have made some unseemly friends. You were never this much of a sweet talker. I bet you're disappointed, though. Look at me, a homely woman you could find anywhere. Uh, Pauline? I wouldn't say you're homely at all. <laughs> For some reason, I find myself in a teasing mood. Please, have mercy, or I'm liable to lose your affection. What I'm trying to say is that being here with the real you, putting my hands in yours, listening to you speak, and seeing you be, well, you, Pauline, is so much more wondrous than anything I imagined. And right now, I'm feeling that stronger than ever. Um, you seem to have found yourself away with words. I imagine you had plenty of time to practice on other women. Goodness, you fiend. 
fiend. That's not terribly convincing with your cheeks the color of wine. He's not denying it, though. They are not God. Hey, now, don't throw a fit. You're the only one who can put me in such high spirits with a few simple words. Did you say something? Who, me? No, not a thing. Say, since you're finally back, how about we take a walk around town? You've taken care of all your work for the time being, right? So you can spare some time for me? Absolutely, Pauline. As much as time allows, I will spend it with you. As much as time allows. And he's like, all right. <laughs> it's like 15 minutes later. He's like, okay, I gotta go again. But they, they do seem really sweet together. And I'm like so sad knowing how the merchant was just like, right at the end was saying like he had someone he had to go back to. And that Pauline doesn't know yet. There's still no trace of him. It's been a week, and I found nothing. Considering my time limit, that needs to change fast. But... Um, excuse me, have you seen this man? This is a drawing of what he looks like. I just imagine it's just like... a stick figure. Sorry, never seen him. It would be so helpful if you could have photographs in this timeline, but we're not quite there yet. Even the smallest piece of information helps. If you've heard about anyone who might have seen him, I said I haven't seen him, so I don't know what to tell you. I'm a busy woman. Would you mind moving aside? Oh, sorry. I was told that he, that my lover, lost his life out on work, but I don't believe it. They haven't shown me a body, so their information has to be an error. I have to be the one to find him, to prove he's still alive. That's my dad. Anytime I watch a, a show or something with him, and if a character is like, if you don't see the body, he's like, it means that they are mo- that, you know, they're not dead. It's like a Schrodinger's cat. Bring up Schrodinger's cat. is like, they might be, but there's a chance it might not be. <laughs> it's just like, a lot of times like, no, I'm pretty sure that they are dead. In this case, we actually saw it happen, so. I have to follow his tracks. I've heard word that remnants of his ship drifted ashore near this village. So if he survived, he must be somewhere nearby. I'm certain of it, but I haven't been able to find any information of the sort. The villagers aren't being very cooperative. They're all just as reserved as the day I arrived. Rather, I get the feeling they want to stay as far away from trouble as they can. No matter what I ask, I can't get a straight answer from anyone. I'm guessing nobody's talked to- everybody in town seems to know about the bestia, but nobody's telling her about it. She's gonna end up at that mansion, you know she is. Everyone still, like, she might find a piece of, like, clothing or something of the merchant's or something of his that... Or, like, a knife? Didn't he have a knife or something? I bet she's gonna find that and be like, he was here. Everyone's still closed off because of the war, I guess. I don't have time for people to be glum, though. I love it. I don't have time for people to be glum. Screw what they're, you know, what they're dealing with. Ah, it's that boy. He's at the shore again. Always alone. God have mercy, you again? What are you doing here? And always so callous. I came to get sentimental and watch the sunset. So original. What does it matter if I visit the seashore? The ocean doesn't belong to anyone. If I'm such a bother, then you're free to leave like last time. You sure are cheeky for an outsider. I know the rest of the village isn't being all that cooperative. Are these two actually going to be like sidekicks? <laughs> Unlikely sidekicks? Nope. That's what this place is like now. Closed off. It's not kind to outsiders. You really gonna be able to keep up the search with the entire town stonewalling you? Yes, I will. I won't give up for any reason. I have to find him, to bring him home with me. Lady, you're... My name isn't Lady, it's Pauline. Pauline. Lady is Pauline! Tch. Pauline, is this person you're looking for still alive? He is. He has to be. Is that so? Well, have fun with that. I doubt you're going to get any help, though. Ah, he really left. Don't lose heart, Pauline. If you lose faith this easily, you'll never find him. He is alive, isn't he? He is alive. I have faith. I believe... Oh, I thought you left. Take it. You're ruining the scenery pacing around on the beach. Is this an orange? They grow pretty large here, huh? 
Yeah, the oranges around these parts are pretty good. People used to come out here just to buy them, in fact. And you went to get one just for me? He's like, no, let's not make this a thing. Just take it. I just want to get rid of you. Once you finish that, get lost, all right? I think he's getting sweet on her. Thanks, I appreciate it. You're not so bad after all. Like I said, this isn't me being nice or anything. Oh, there you go again. Yeah, yeah, I got you all figured out, little man. You're actually a very sweet boy. And you were really trying to cheer me up, weren't you? Javi. What? My name. It's not little man, it's Javi. Alright then, Javier it is. No, not Javier, just Javi. I don't see what the big deal is, but okay. Say, Javi, I really think we should be friends. What? <laughs> Come on, let's be friends. Don't say you don't need any. You can make me friend number one. She's like, I know you're a friendless loser, so come on. <laughs> we'll have lots of fun. You just want to use me in your search because you can't get the villagers to talk on your own. No, I mean it, really. You're wasting your time. I'm just as much trouble for them as you. Using me isn't going to get you anywhere. Trouble? What do you mean by that, Javi? Nothing you need to know, lady. Bye, and stay away from the shore. Ah, uh, hold on a second. Maybe he sees some kinship with her because they're both, like... He said that he's trouble for the villagers, too. Maybe they think he's some sort of beast or something. Maybe he has, like, some kinship because they're both outsiders. What? Pauline. What? <laughs> My name isn't Lady, it's Pauline. Listen to me, Javi. I have no intention whatsoever of using you. I enjoy talking to you, and I think it'd be fun if I could do it more. That's why I want to be friends. I can find you here at the beach, right? I'll be back, Javi. You won't change my mind. I will make you my friend, Javi. That sounds like a threat. What the hell, lady? It's just like, she's... What, probably in her late teens, early 20s, and she's just like being very insistent with like this 10-year-old, or however old he is. It's a little weird. Did you hear a word I said? If this was reversed, if this was like an older guy who just kept like pestering a little girl, be like, let's be friends, let's be friends. It would be rightfully creepy. <laughs> I don't need any damn friends. And stay away from the beach. Nope, you will be my friend. Ain't happening. Wait, Javi. See you again. I'm not kidding. I will come back. It just sounds more threatening the more she talks. I had actually at first been thinking it would be easier to get information if I could make friends with someone in the village. But that orange hobby gave me when I was sad and lonely and hurting was so amazingly fresh and delicious. More than any orange I've ever had before. It was almost as though Javi's kindness was seeping directly into my mouth. I'm sure we'll be able to get along. I want to be his friend. Time is the only thing moving forward in my search. Some days I would ask my mom's friend Orlando to accompany me on trips outside the village. But no matter where I go, I just hear the same thing. The view of the ocean always keeps me from getting too dejected. It's an unimaginably huge chasm that keeps us apart. But at the same time, there's something beautiful about the way the sea encompasses the entire world. The Emerald Expanse. It simultaneously robs me of him and soothes my heart with its stunning brilliance. Perhaps I feel such awe and admiration for it, because I was born along the seaside. Hmm? He's not here today. Javi, are you here? That's odd. I can always find him here. Hey, Javi, where did you go? Uh, oh, what? What happened? Did she fall in a- Oh, uh, did he- he set a trap for her. I can't believe you fell for that. A pitfall? That's not very nice, Javi. Why would you do that to me? Hmm, because you won't stop following me around. You have any idea of how annoying that is? It doesn't mean you just- you can- It doesn't mean you have to do something so cruel. Maybe now you'll learn your lesson and stay away from the beach. Ah, uh, jerk. Hmm. I think- I feel like he wants her to stay away from the beach for more reasons than just because he's there. I think maybe he's trying to protect her from something. Hey. Yeah. Wah. <laughs> Wait, you seriously crying? 
Hey, don't cry. The ultimate women's weapon. Just start crying, it makes guys uncomfortable. Just kidding. I'm not crying. What? Come on, you were faking? You tricked me? You played the first mean prank, Javi. You really scared me there. I kept telling you to stay away. It's your fault for constantly refusing to listen. I'm surprised you haven't gotten bored yet. You must have a lot of time on your hands. I most certainly do not have a lot of time. My deadline for how long I can be here is quickly approaching. But I'll just get depressed if I spend all that time searching. If I can have some fun with you, Hobby, I'll have more energy. Fun, eh? So you still haven't found him? No. You don't even know if the guy's alive or dead, just... Forget it. I'm out of here. Wait, hold on a sec. A ow Ow. Come on, you're not going to fool me again. No, I'm not joking around. I really... Ugh. I mean, come on, Javi. Like, yeah, if someone falls into a hole, they're likely to probably sprain their ankle or something. It looks like I twisted my ankle. Haha, -ha, but I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Wait. Huh? Come on, let me see your foot. All right. Ankle's swollen. At least learn to land properly. What? You're gonna blame me when you're the one who dug the hole? No one's ever gotten hurt in a trap that basic. At least, none of my friends ever did. Wait, I thought you didn't have friends, Hobby. Oh, shut your damn mouth. I'm going to bandage your ankle. Oh, I see. You went to get a bandage for me. Thank you. It was my fault, anyway. Swap it out for a real bandage when you can. I'm sure your acquaintance has some. Really? It looks fine to me. This filthy thing isn't suitable for something like- for someone like you, lady. Pauline, quit that. What do you mean, not suitable? Do I have to explain everything? You're from a pretty well-off country, aren't you, Pauline? Well, compared to that, this is a poor village. We don't even have clean bandages to spare. Just grow scraps of cloth like this. It's not something you should be wearing. You think so? But you gave it to me, Javi. I won't be changing it anytime soon, as she gets horribly infected from the dirty bandage. <laughs> Tell me, Javi, do you not like this village? The only thing this place has going for it is the ocean. The ocean? It's the one thing that doesn't change, no matter what. It's always beautiful. I see. You like the ocean too, Javi. I just don't have anything else to like. Oh, there you go again. Oh, I've got an idea. Javi, Javi! What now? A rowboat! I want to take a ride in a rowboat. Would anyone get mad if we borrowed the one tied up over there for a bit? I doubt anyone would care if it's just for a little... Can you row though later? Or lady? You'll do the rowing, Javi. Wow, I love how she comes to this disenfranchised village and then just treats him like a little servant boy. <laughs> huh? Why me? What's the big deal? The water's mostly calm today. I think a little walk on the sea would be lovely. Can you call that to walk? Sure you can. Come on, let's go. Give me a hand, Javi. God, you are one cheeky outsider. The breeze feels different on the water than it does on the beach, wouldn't you say? You think so? All the same to me. No, it's definitely different. The smell of salt is stronger, and there's more moisture in there. This makes me want to go, like, to the ocean, go to the beach. It's kind of like someone gently caressing your cheek. I'm not getting any of that. You are way too perceptive, lady. Am I? Close your eyes, Javi, and feel the breeze. I bet you'll get what I'm saying. Go on, close your eyes. No, I'm not going to. What? Why not? I just don't want to do what you tell me. Oh, no need to be petty. The sea is not always so kind. The hand that gently caresses your cheek can, in a blink of an eye, become the wrinkled hand of a witch that destroys everything it touches. The ocean is a scary thing. It's nothing we humans have any chance of standing up against. You're right. And I know it very, very well. The man I'm searching for was in a shipwreck. I was told it killed him, but I refused to believe he would just leave me behind like that. Sometimes on a whim, the wrinkly witch may have mercy. I'm not so sure about that. I trust in the sea's gentleness. I don't think it's all scary. Well, technically she's right. He did not die by shipwreck. The soft breeze, these calm waves, they saved him. 
I'm sure of it. He loved the ocean too, you know. He was always looking far into the distance, out across the water. His head held high, a stern, unwavering look in his eyes. I'm assuming he's your lover? Yes. He's very dear to me, and I love him deeply. Oh, I see. He's getting a little jealous. He's really fond of the sea by my hometown. You live in a decent town, huh? Yep, it's wonderful. It's so peaceful, and everyone's so nice. There's not a single bad person living there. Oh, I know, Javi. You should come visit my hometown sometime. Visit your home? Yeah, the ocean there is really pretty, too. The colors are a little deeper than they are here. It's like so many jewels sparkling in the light. I'm sure you'll love it, Javi. I'd love for you to come visit. We can go see all sorts of things. There's this little shop that sells great ham sandwiches. I don't have the money for a trip. Maybe not now, but you could in the future. Or, if you're interested at all, I could ask Orlando to bring you back with us, Javi. If you don't want to stay here, that is. Along with the guy you're looking for? Yep, I'm sure he'd be happy to have you along. <laughs> Javi's like, sounds like a third wheel situation to me. Give it some thought. You would enjoy it, I'm sure. You sound like a child. Huh? Nothing. I doubt I could even get permission to leave. Permission? Oh, right. Are your parents pretty strict, Javi? No. We're gonna get, we're gonna get some backstory about this kid, right? This kid seems very mysterious. Ooh. He is talking like a beast. They're dead, both my mom and dad. What? They were murdered. So I'm staying with an acquaintance. They try to work me like a horse, though. So I sneak out here when I get the chance. Was it in the war? The war? What are you talking about, lady? Huh? Wasn't this country invo involved in a war not too long ago? There was a war, yes, but no soldiers ever reached it, so they all died by beast. Then why would they be killed? It was the beast. The beast? Yes, the beast. He showed up one day and destroyed everything. The peace, my family, my friends. Merchants and travelers. But that's why it, it, she sounded like, I know she didn't mean it, but like all of his friends died to this beast. And then she's being like, oh, you have no friends. It's like, yeah, I did, but they all died. Merchants and travelers visiting the village. And that's why everybody's closed off is they don't want her to know about the beast, I'm sure. Everyone and everything. He slaughtered everything, and then he disappeared. That man, that bestia, destroyed everything. He's a murderous beast. The whole village is terrified of him. They go through their days like lifeless dolls, enveloped in his storm cloud of terror. Bestia, a murderous beast. So the grim air hanging in the village isn't because of the war. It's because a beast has been killing people. A beast? Why would... But... Hey, Javi... You said there were merchants and travelers visiting the village. Oh, here we go. Can you describe them for me? There were all sorts. Like one who stopped on the road to somewhere else. And an international trader on his way to purchase goods. Water, 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 water. I just need some water. Just some water. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Will they attack me again? No, if I ask. Did they look like they would open to request? No, they tried to kill me. They almost killed me. They threw stones at me. They did more than that. Hoes and knives and sticks, and I don't know. Things I didn't even recognize. They hit me with them. Ah, uh, nah. Uh. They tried to kill me. They looked like they were going to kill me. I almost died. I'm on the verge of death even now. My throat is sore. It hurts. No, I don't feel pain anymore. It burns. Does it burn? Oh, that's like squeaky noise in the background. Oof. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm so thirsty. Water. I just need water. Will they not even give me water? Why? Why not? Because... I'm a bestia? Because I'm a beast. Because I don't need to live. Because I don't deserve to live. Are beasts meant to die? Am I meant to die? I'm thirsty. My stomach is probably empty too. I don't know anymore, but I'm hungry. So very hungry. 
I can't take it. 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 Water. I just need water. Just some water. What must I do to get some water from that village? A well. A well. I can find a well. There has to be a well. I know what that is. I know what a well is. What else do I know? Nothing. 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 I have no memories. I have nothing. I'm a beast. A newborn beast. What is this? It's buried. It's red. It feels rough. Ha. Ha. Ah. 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 <laughs> there was something. There is something. Something I know. I know this. This is mine. It must be. It's mine. I know this. It's mine. I know how to use it. How to touch it. It's the sword. Right? How to touch it. How to hold it. How to swing it. I know what this is. What to do with it. What it's for. I know that with this, I can fight on equal footing with them. A beast. 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 I am a beast. Beasts are meant to be ridiculed, to be hated, to be resented, to die. But I want to live, which means I have only one option, only one way, only one. With this, I must overthrow those who tormented me. I can do that. Water and food. I can get that. I can get anything. Oh, here we go. We're seeing... It all happened. He's just gonna slaughter everybody. Who could that be at this time of night? Who's there? You shouldn't answer it. It's probably a beggar or something. These are dangerous times. I wonder how Javi managed to survive. Maybe he just hid. You're right. How unpleasant a world we live in that we should have to fear for our lives in this little village. Unpleasant indeed. I hope things go back how they used to be soon enough. Oh, you just don't give up. Who's there? You're not coming in without identifying yourself. This is rather strange. What's going on, Dad? Oh, did the noise wake you? There's nothing to worry about, son. Go back to bed. It'll quiet down soon. The door. Huh? Ah! Gah! What? What? What's? Mom? Ah. Javi, look away. Why is, why is the bestia? Run, you hear me? Go out the back door and let everyone know. Shove as loud as you can. Gah! What is this? What's going on? Why? There's blood? Why? It can't be. What the? How did this? Why? Why? Mom. Dad. Bestia. Bestia. The bestia. You. Why would you... And somehow he... I don't know if Hobby just managed to outrun him, or he let him live? Ha. <sighs> ha. Ah. What's the matter? You sound like you're in pain. Would you like me to fetch you some water? Water. Don't touch me. Keep your hands off me. Not a particularly restful sleep, I take it? You. Where are you hiding? Why did you disappear? You were always around before. Um, is he talking- he's talking about the maid, right? Show yourself. Show yourself immediately. Where are you? Show yourself. And if I did, what would you do then? Kill me? Your thirst for blood is to instill fear, to live in the face of your desire. Others' lives are meaningless. That's the kind of man you are. Or, do you intend to pretend that you never did anything of the sort? If this is the maid talking, what a whiplash from before where she was like, oh, well, you will be my master. And she never really seemed that scared of him except at certain points. Now it like, seems like if this is her that she's kind of badgering him and just riling him up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I couldn't help it. I wanted to live. I didn't want to die. Yes. Yes, indeed. That's the kind of man you are. He'll kill for your own sake. He'll kill a child's mother and father as he stands there watching. They... they tried to kill me first. All of them. The entire village. Calm yourself. Who are you speaking to? Please get a hold of yourself. Silence. Stop talking. Keep... keep your hands off me. I'll kill you too. I'm a beast. 
will kill anyone. Calm down. It's all right. Everything's all right. It's all right. I, I'm a, I'm a beast. Beasts kill, and so I kill. Breathe slower. I will not harm you, and you will not harm me. That's a lot of faith she's got in him. It's all right. Put your arms around me. See for yourself that I am not afraid of you. This is brilliant. What are you clinging on to this woman for? Is that the only way you can maintain your grip on yourself? It would be so, so much easier if you simply accepted the fact that you're a beast. You've always, always been one, haven't you? Can a beast cultivate love like a human? Weep in sorrow like a human? No, they cannot. It's utterly ridiculous. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. It's all right. I'm right here. I'm right here. Can I... Can I trust you? Of course. This little facade will be over soon enough. It will end at that woman's hands. Because that's what she's here for. To crush your soul into tiny pieces. She seems to... Yeah, I was like I was saying, it seems, it seems like she brings happiness for a little while and then suffering whether she does that intentionally or not i don't know we met three years ago i thought for sure i would get burnt sitting beneath the hellishly pounding sun on that swelteringly summer day it's only ever on days such as those that we end up having lunch outside not just out of the house literally outside the heat was searing I could hear the cry of seagulls from the restaurant's terrace. I remember that day, uh, clear as crystal. Ah, yes, I have to say, the food here is spectacular. And I love that they give you so much meat. Though, I thought my gut would explode the first time I saw it. Wouldn't you say, son? Indeed, yes, it is. By the look on your face, I'd say you're already feeling it. You're not going to make it in this line of work without a big old stomach, son. Haha. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of this country's food. One taste and you'll never forget it. I'd like to bring the entire cuisine back with me if I could. This is the first time we've seen you in how long, and you're talking about food? The first thing you asked when you arrived was, is the restaurant by the seaside still open, for goodness sake? That's me, that's that's me and my family. <laughs> we talk about food all the time. We're, we're, we're hungry people. Is your heart made of stone? Food is the language of love, okay? Just say it. What, would you prefer we discuss the mundane? Why don't we talk about market developments and our spices inventory? That's not what I meant. Hmm, it's hot. My parents' relationship is on thin ice, but the air feels like it's on fire. It's much too hot. My dad loves the seaside restaurant. It actually specializes in fish, but he always acts, asks for meat. Though always isn't very often. He's out of the country most of the time, so we rarely eat together as a family. For that reason, I can usually put up with a little heat for a family gathering. Today, however, is awkward. Go on, son, dig in. You can't find food this good back home. A as you say, every course the table is lined with meat, meat, meat. Even I'm starting to feel heavy in the gut. At this rate, I might turn into meat myself. Hmm, what kind of meat would I turn into, though? I guess beef, maybe. The meal keeps on like this. Just how much food are you planning to order? I can't believe you. Why did I ever marry you? Damn, it is awkward. Come now, we're a family. You could stand to be a little more pleasant. Who do you think is making me unpleasant? Now, 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 now. Now, now, now. <laughs> From time to time, our eyes meet. But every time they do, we both avert our gaze. This goes on throughout the meal. My father invited him to lunch. Dad introduced him as his right hand, so I assume he's also a traitor. His eyes are somewhat narrow, his posture perfectly upright. He looks very no-nonsense, and not especially affable. Frankly, he kind of scares me. Hey, Dad. Are we going anywhere after lunch? I figured since we're all together, maybe we could take a walk or visit someplace out of town? Uh, yes, hmm. Actually, I've got a letter to write after this. A letter to one of the bigwigs back home, so I'm planning to head straight back to the trading post. Oh, okay. Can't say I'm especially surprised. What do you want me to do? It's work, and it has to be done. If I could get an audience with him in person, maybe this wouldn't be necessary, but that's not possible. 
so I have no choice but to write a long, long letter. Oh yes, Pauline, if you're going on a walk, bring him along. I'm sure he's tired of putting up with me day in and day out. What? Oh, no, I'm... Hold on now. Could you please leave Pauline out of this? She has things she needs to do. What's the big deal? You want to know about an area? Ask someone who lives there. That's the best way to learn. Besides, you'll stick out like a sore thumb wandering around on your own, son. But I couldn't. Um, I... You don't mind, do you, Pauline? Uh, not at all. God, you are the most inconsiderate man, Mom says and leans in and whispers to me. Listen to me. Do not let your guard down around a foreign man. My father is, as a matter of fact, a foreigner, <laughs> and the man he brought to lunch is from the same country. I just- okay, I just love the fact that she married a foreigner, but then she's like, I uh, don't trust foreigners. <laughs> um, this is a park. Indeed it is. It is a park. Oh boy, this is awkward. My assignment to show this man around town is, to be honest, going quite horribly. This is a park. No, just, no. Couldn't you come up with anything better, Pauline? But I don't know anything about the history of this park. In fact, I don't know much of anything about this town's history. I just sort of walk around every day, not really paying it much mind. Wouldn't someone more knowledgeable make a better guide? I can't do it. Don't ask this of me. Also, he... He doesn't talk very much, and he's got this perpetually stern look on his face. He really does scare me. Don't worry, Mom. Your daughter won't mistakenly fall for a foreigner. <laughs> like mother, like daughter, right? At any rate, regardless of how I feel, I am still technically his guide. I've got to try a little harder. Though I know it won't be easy. And then, uh, there's a fountain. There is indeed a fountain. There's a fountain. Again, no. Seriously, Pauline? He has eyes. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not much of a guide. Maybe my dad could show you around instead. No, don't worry about it. I think you're doing just fine. In fact, I'm sorry you got roped into this. I doubt you much enjoy having to walk around town, besides, uh, uh, beside, um, someone like me. What? No, that's not it at all. Oh, is that so? I'm glad to hear it. Here's an idea. Rather than guide me, how about this? Why don't you show me what you usually do, the places you normally go? Do you really want to see that? I'd prefer to see the town through the eyes of a resident. To see it for what it is, instead of what makes good sightseeing. Alright then, um... I often get ham sandwiches from the shops near here. Having lunch on the wall by the fountain is the most wonderful thing. Look over there, you see the butcher shop? And the bakery next to it? I buy bread from the bakery, bring it to the butcher, get a few slices of ham, and put it on the bread. This girl is obsessed with ham sandwiches. It's absolutely to die for. But you just had a huge lunch. I mean, let's be honest, when you take someone to like your home where you live, a lot of the time it's to show them food places that you like. I'm not getting one right now. Also, please don't think I'm as carnivorous as my dad. Sorry, I didn't mean to imply such a thing. Jeez. Wait, hold on. Did he just smile? He did. It was a small one, but he did. He can actually smile. Being human, that should be obvious, but it's kind of strange seeing him do it. Maybe, just maybe, we can get along, even just for a little bit? Um, do you mind if I ask you a question? Sure, go right ahead. Could you tell me about your home country? I've asked Dad, but he won't tell me very much. Ah, come on, how about it? I'm really curious. He probably doesn't know very much himself. What? About his own- his own homeland? Some don't. What do you- How about that fountain? I'd like to get a closer look at it. At the spot you say you like to sit. Okay. What was that just now? Did he dodge my question? Is there something there he doesn't want to get into? From this angle, it looks like the fountain's sitting atop the ocean. Yeah, it does. It does. If you want, we can go to the beach. It's a straight walk from here. No, I like this view. The sea's a pretty color here. You can clearly see the white of the fountain upon it. The sea's a different color than the fountain? It is. In fact, the sea is often changing colors itself, but out on the water, it can be easy to overlook. It can be the color of emeralds, or deep blue like sapphire, or almost black like obsidian. The sea has a face, and with it, many expressions. Huh, I'd like to see that. 
Maybe I'll ask Dad and get him to take me out on his ship. You have quite the adventurous spirit. Not many women say they want to ride a ship. You think? I want to go everywhere I haven't been before. I want to see for myself if the world extends beyond this town. Or that the world extends beyond this town, not if. Ah, that's a fine ambition. Hopefully, the time will come when anyone can have access to a ship with relative ease. He actually smiles quite a bit, I guess. And we seem to be talking pretty comfortably, too. He's a lot more friendly than he looks. He appears almost noble, the way he looks at the sea. His gaze steadfast and unwavering. Oh dear, that was close. He almost deceived me. He's a foreign man, and I'm simply his guide. You mustn't think you've grown close to him just because you were able to hold a brief conversation. By the way... Hmm? Pardon me, yes? That outfit you're wearing. What, this? Oh, yes, it's absolutely splendid. My dad brought it back for me. It's of a peculiar design, with unusual accessories. The moment I saw it, I said, Oh my. Oh my, I said. It's so pretty, I want to show it to everyone. I see. What is with the girls in this game that are being like, they just want to show off their pretty dresses and clothing? They just talk it up so much. It's just so magnificent. He actually has a decent eye for clothing. I guess he had more in his head than meat. Actually, um... Oh, shoot, is that, like, something of his? I brought back that outfit. Oh, huh? When when I heard I was going to meet my boss's daughter. Oh, I thought it'd be best if I brought some kind of gift. Oh, damn! He's suave and he has good taste. I can see why she fell for him. So I had a tailor imitate the style of my homeland. I'm delighted it's to your liking. What? 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 Hold on a second. Yes? So you're saying these clothes I'm fawning over were given to me by you, and you had them made for me? Indeed. And completely oblivious, here I am wearing them now. More precisely, you've been wearing them since lunch. Well, why didn't you say something before? This is humiliating. I want to bury my head in the sand. But, but I thought you liked them. I do, I do indeed, but... Having never met you, I wasn't sure what colors you liked, but... I'm, a. Uh, I was relieved to see you wearing them. They look nice on you. He says with a smile. He's always standing up perfectly straight, always looking stern and no-nonsense. And he's, and he kind of scares me. But he's a gentleman. I, I'm going to go change. What? I'm going to go change. I'll be back in five seconds, so wait there. Ah. Uh, five seconds is infeasible. Oh god, help me, mom. I really, really need your help. Because my heart just skipped a beat. For a foreign man. Oh, is that so? Very well, then. Oh no, thank you for the information. I really appreciate it. And don't worry about me. I'll keep safe. Goodbye. Shortly before I arrived at the village, a beast appeared. It killed a number of villagers and then disappeared. Ever since then, the village hasn't been itself. There's a cloud of gloom hovering over it, fear visible in everyone's eyes. At first I thought their fear was of the beast returning, but that's not quite right. Their troubles with the beast are, in fact, still ongoing. But she's probably gonna find out about the mansion, gonna find out maybe her and Javi are gonna go together to try and find the beast. Javi. Hey, I hear you were asking around about the beast. Yeah. Talking about the beast is taboo. People are going to push you away even harder now. Though I guess you are leaving in a few days. People going missing. I wonder, hopefully Pauline will survive this. I like her character and hopefully Javi can go with her. She can sneak him out of the country or get out of this town and he can go live with her and have ham sandwiches. <laughs> Your beast problem is still going on, isn't it? Huh. After asking around, I'm beginning to piece things together. When the beast first appeared, you chased it away. However, later... A uh, what? He chased it away? Little little Javi? Or does she mean the whole village? The beast came back, killing villagers. I would assume the whole village. I don't think a beast would be scared of Javi. But then lays the question of why did it not kill Javi? After that, the beast disappeared, but villagers began disappearing too. Once a week, someone would just be gone. And even as the weeks passed, none of them ever returned. The people of the village think the beast is responsible. They think it's kidnapping villagers. That's right. This village is under the beast's curse. 
So you're better off forgetting about this place and the savage beast that dwells nearby. You don't belong in a place like this. Go back to your hometown, where it's peaceful. That's the kind of life you deserve. Avi. What? I want you to be honest with me about something. Where does... I won't tell you. Why not? They told me. That you... That you'd know where the beast is, Javi. Why does Javi have all this information? This kid's sus. Um, <laughs> I heard from the other villagers that you once chased the beast. Sure you didn't mishear him? No, I'm positive. You know where the beast ran off to. Where its hideaway is. You chased after it, found its den, and then you came back. That's what I heard. Didn't you? Why did you keep that from me? When you told me about the beast, I asked you to tell me everything you knew, Javi. But you brushed me off and said you didn't know anything. You said I should talk to someone else. He's obviously trying to protect her, when in reality, you know more about it than anyone else. Tell me why. Why did you hide that from me? What were you thinking, as you watched me frantically asking around the village for more information? Were you enjoying yourself? Tell me, why are you always so mean to me? Shut the hell up. Like I could tell you. Like I could actually tell you that. what the village tell you about me? Did it go something like this? That the kid couldn't even take revenge for his parents? That he's a damn coward? I'm sure you heard one, that one plenty from everyone. And, well, Jesus, I'm like, really? Really, the villagers? I doubt they actually think that. They think that this little kid is going to be able to go up against a beast that's killed tons of villagers? And if he, if he doesn't, then he's a coward? Then I'm a coward, too. I don't. Yeah, it's true. I went after the beast. I chased it down the night it killed my parents. Hiding around back, I saw it slip into the forest. So I went after it, chasing it until I reached its den. I despised that bestia with everything I had. It murdered my mom and dad. It murdered my friends, the kindly priest, every decent person in town, and only left the assholes, apparently. I wanted. I needed to get revenge for what it had done. It was my duty to bring retribution upon the beast that stole everything from me. So I tried to confront the bestia. But... I couldn't do it. Not only could I not stand up to it, as soon as it turned around and I saw its eyes, its bloodshot eyes and black irises, I couldn't move. Javi. Yeah, that's right. I was a coward. No, you're a child. I think even adults would be terrified. We've seen that. I watched as it killed my parents and even followed it home, but I couldn't do anything. Anything except run, flee, screaming in terror. That was all I could do. Javi, that doesn't make you a coward. The beast really was that terrifying. But I was supposed to stand up to it. That's what the rest of the village would have wanted. For someone to eradicate the bestia. When I came back, having accomplished nothing, everyone was so harsh. Damn! Wow, they literally did. I was thinking at first, like, maybe he's just... He's projecting his feelings about himself onto the other villagers. Like, he thinks because he's a coward, everyone else thinks... Nope, they literally said to his face he's a coward. Man, people in this village are assholes. He was right. They did kill all the decent people. You coward. What did you even go out there for? Constant ridicule. He should be like, all right, I'll lead you to the beast. You guys can do it yourself. Maybe that's why. Maybe once a week. He said about once a week, a village, like a villager would go missing. Maybe that's it. Maybe someone, people were trying to kill it and, and failed. What right do they have to, if they really want him gone, yeah, they could all go together and... No one's got that kind of courage left. They're all waiting for someone else to speak up. Someone to stand up and say, let's go kill that beast. But no one has the guts to take the initiative. It could have been me, but... The moment I fled back to the village in fear, I lost that qualification. You think that was just me being mean? Huh? That I didn't tell you where the beast dwells? Do you think that was just me harassing you? I've seen the beast. I know how scary it is, and I know how dangerous it is. And do you think I tell you where it is? I know good and well what you're thinking. That the guy you're looking for might have been taken by him. And you want to go to its den and see if he's there. Knowing that, do you really think I'd tell you? You go, you'll... It'll kill you. You don't have any evidence anyway. 
Nothing that points to that guy being taken by the beast. What? You don't need to put your life on the line for something like that. Something so uncertain. Even if, even if by some chance he was taken by the beast. There's no way he'd be alive. That's what the beast does. No one comes back alive. But you came back alive, Javi. Which means there's no saying for sure either way. That's just because I ran away immediately, but even if he did manage to escape, that's all the more reason not to check the beast den. I, I want to know for sure whether he's alive or dead. Somewhere in a little corner of my heart, part of me thinks he might just actually be dead. I have to have faith, but I'm so close to cracking, to thinking he won't ever come back to me. Then why don't you just give up on him, Ari, so get with me instead? <laughs> Without knowing for sure, I can't let go. Ah, uh, Javi's a good kid. I knew these two were gonna be like, they were gonna be like buds. I'll debate with myself forever, until I die an old lady, about whether or not he's still alive. That's how my life will end. You want closure. You want to know for sure whether he's alive or dead, right? That's like, it's the not knowing that would be the killer. At least if you know, it's like you said, you get some closure, you can move on. Even if he is dead, you'll be satisfied just knowing it. Right. Which is why I want to at least follow any possible leads. There might not be anything saying he's there, but it is true that remains of the ship he was on washed up in this village. If he wandered the area and ended up at the beast den where he was killed, then I'll let go. So please, Javi, tell me where the beast dwells. Make this the last time. Huh? Even if you find no trace of him at the beast den, even if you don't figure out whether he's alive or dead, you'll give up your search for him. You'll assume he's dead, if you don't reach some conclusion, you'll just keep searching, keep going to dangerous places, keep putting yourself at risk. I want you to stop that. He's like a father, like, scolding his daughter, being like, you gotta be safe. To stop, go back to your town and live a normal life. Settle on an answer. If you can promise me that, I'll tell you where the beast den is. Okay, I promise. This will be the last place I look. Two more things. First, I'm going with you. Of course, I knew this was going to happen. Wait, but I thought, isn't it dangerous? Exactly. I can't let you go alone. Javi, I have to go with you and make sure you don't do anything stupid. All right, fine. And the other one? You will not enter the den. You don't understand just how dangerous the beast is. It knows no mercy. It indiscriminately attacks any human it sees. You can't let the beast find you. You just examine the den from the outside, and when you're done, back to the village. Understood? You need to promise me this. Okay. Oh, right, one more thing. Huh? I thought it was just two things. This is less of a promise, and more something that would be nice. Oh, I decide when we make it back to the village. Oh, I would actually like if you could take me to your hometown. I hope they bolster- I have a bad feeling. I feel like Javi's gonna die. Whenever there's a thing like this where, like, he kind of breaks out of his shell and he's like, I'd like to get out of this village and see something new, he's gonna die before he gets that chance. Oh god, poor Javi. I would actually like if you could take me to your hometown. Javi, I'll figure out some way to get permission. That's a death flag right there. And I'll do my best not to be a burden on you. I'm still just a kid and there's not a whole lot I can do, even in a better place, but I'm surprisingly skilled with my hands. If you have work for me, I'll do anything. So, there's that. Yes. Yes, of course I will. We'll go back to my hometown together and I'll show you around. Oh god, death flag raised. You can get some great ham sandwiches there. <laughs> That's all she's got. She's like, this is a nice view of the ocean and they got good ham sandwiches. That's all I know about this place. And a apparently a really good restaurant. We'll eat them together in the park. You told me that already. <laughs> she's like, will you stop talking about the damn Ham sandwiches? Are you ever not hungry, lady? <laughs> oh, you laughed. You just laughed, Javi. Whoa, back off. I did not laugh. Nope, you definitely laughed. You're kind of cute when you laugh, Javi. Come on, do it again. Go on, like this. Shut up, stay back. Stop it, don't touch my cheeks. I wanted to see it again. I am not your plaything. Hee <laughs> hee. 
Anyway, we set out tomorrow. We will return before it gets dark, and you will keep your promises, and you will not do anything dangerous. Which means none of those things are going to happen. <laughs> Got it? Promise. Thank you, Javi. I don't need your thanks. Thank you. That thank you is not for him agreeing to tell me where the beast den is, but because I can see that Javi's trying to save me. His care calms the turbulent waves that have been crashing inside me. I was always anxious. I always believed. I always thought I'd, uh, I'd see him again. But I also recognized that I was practically living a fantasy. I was just too stubborn to admit it. I certainly won't be able to change how I feel immediately. I'll probably continue loving him. Nevertheless, Javi's words resonated comfortingly within me, or with me. I can see, if but vaguely, a new path, a new way of life appearing before me. Well, let's hope it doesn't get cut short before that actually happens. That's what he did for me. I will make this the last time. My final attempt to find him. No matter the outcome, I will stop stubbornly believing he's still alive. And then, I'll find happiness on a different path. Okay, so, a lot of information to take in in this episode. Uh, learning a little bit more about this beast. Uh, I think the big shocker was the return of the white-haired girl. Uh, years after she originally showed up at this mansion in different times, but it seems like her story has changed. Um, there's some key differences, the main thing being that she's blind. And the fact that she keeps coming back to this mansion, maybe she it, it's like she's drawn to the mansion and she's different for different people. It seems like she is what the people in the mansion need. But as we saw with the first door, it did not end well for her or for the people in the mansion. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And then, of course, we have the introduction of uh, the merchant's lover, Pauline, and her quest to find out what really happened to him. And it seems like it might be culminating soon with her and uh, Javi going to see the Beast Den. And the Beast starting to lose control over himself with the uh, him killing that other Beast. So I'm excited to see where the story goes from here. I hope you guys enjoy this episode and stay tuned next week for part four. Until then, bye. Special shoutouts to my top tier patrons. Nana, Kaori Mikoto. Revealing Storm, Tequila Mockingbird, Jared Fan, Saya, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gaziff, Puncake G, Icognito, and Matt Goldsmith.